When you picture an atom, you might picture it like this. A positive nucleus with negatively charged electrons orbiting around the positive nucleus. After all, we always talk about electron orbitals, so it seems natural to picture them orbiting. This model of electrons orbiting a nucleus was proposed in 1909 by Ernest Rutherford, and it was called the Rutherford Model. He said you can picture an atom kind of like a mini solar system, with a high density nucleus at the center and the lighter electrons orbiting at high speeds around the outer edges. But there's a major problem with this view. If an electron's orbiting, then it has a constant centripetal acceleration. And when a charged particle accelerates, it gives off radiation, so it loses energy. So we can calculate how much energy an electron loses if it were to continually orbit a nucleus. Using the Larmor formula, we can calculate that an electron would lose all its energy in about 10 picoseconds, or about 0.01 nanoseconds. Then it would crash into the nucleus. So if this is true, then an atom couldn't be stable for more than a few picoseconds. But obviously that isn't true since you're made of atoms and you're more than a few picoseconds old. So a better idea of the electrons in an atom isn't to picture them as particles orbiting, but rather picture them as standing waves around a nucleus. So what does this mean? Well, a great analog to this description is just to take a metal ring like this. Let's say that this ring is an electron that surrounds the nucleus of an atom. If I vibrate this ring slowly, nothing happens. But as I increase the frequency, it suddenly starts to resonate. So we now have a standing wave in a circle. This looks so cool. But notice something here. I can increase the energy by turning up the frequency of vibration, but suddenly the resonance goes away and it just looks like a normal ring again. But then suddenly if I keep increasing it, then I get another standing wave. This time with more nodes. And then another higher mode here. There's another one. And still finally one higher one here. Notice that I don't get any standing waves in between these frequencies. So there are only certain energy inputs that are allowed in order for standing waves to occur. For a standing wave to form in a circle, an integral number of wavelengths must fit within the circumference. This means that only some discrete wavelengths are allowed to form in a circle of a given radius. What's happening here is exactly what Niels Bohr proposed is happening in an atom. The electron can only increase in energy with discrete intervals, just like in our ring experiment here. The ring doesn't vibrate unless I give it some specific energy input. So the energies of this ring and the energies of electrons are quantized, meaning that they only come in discrete packets. So they found that it's necessary that electrons move to different vibrations through quantum leaps. There's no smooth transition from one vibration to the next. They jump to different vibrations that we still call orbitals even though nothing is orbiting. The resonant frequencies of an electron look like this. These are the possible orbitals of an electron orbiting around a proton. But that leads to another question. In this experiment we have a ring vibrating. But in the case of an electron, what's actually vibrating? And before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. These last few years have been difficult for everyone, and one of the most important things you can do in times like this is to focus on your mental health. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge as well. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility and a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash action lab, or you can click the link in the description. And thanks for BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the experiment. So what's actually vibrating in the case of an electron? Well, the truth is there's nothing physical that's actually vibrating. 
Whenever we try to measure where an electron is, we never see it spread out in a wave like this, like this ring here. We always see it as a little particle, never a wave like we've described here. For example, in the first resonant frequency of an electron around a proton, it looks like this. This is also called the s orbital. But when we measure where an electron is in a real s orbital, we find that it's here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here. It always is in some random spot. But when we measure it a lot of times, we find that where the dots are spread out in space start to look like the original electron orbital looked like. So what we find is that the electron orbitals show us the resonant frequencies of an electron, and this helps us know where the electron's likely to be found when we measure it. So if we take the square of the wave function of the electron in a specific orbital, we find that it gives us the probability of finding an electron in that specific place. So a vibrating ring can become a great analog for understanding electron orbitals, but it's not perfect. Another difference is that the ring provides modes with an odd number of half wavelengths, but a Bohr model to the atom allows modes with an even number of wavelengths. And the reason for that is how the ring is actually attached to the vibration apparatus. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab, and we'll see you next time.